Okay, guys, uh, you have got enough theory explanation about the tensile test. Now I'm going to explain you how to do the tensile test. Before I start, let me explain the apparatus of the tensile test testing uh, apparatus. So here, this is the tensile testing machine which has got the total capacity of 20 kilonewton. It means what? We can apply the load till 20 kilonewton. I have already fixed the specimen for you. Let me show the specimen. Here I am showing two different specimen which is made up of different materials. This is the steel specimen, this is the brass specimen. We can test so many different types of specimens. We can check all the elastic limit, yield limit, breaking limit, everything can be checked by using this apparatus. So I already told you this has been fixed for you. Here inside you have got the specimen and this sample I am just showing it to you for your reference. Now. Before we fix the specimen, what we have to do by using the vernier caliper, we need to check the diameter first. This is the very first step we have to do before we fix the specimen on the machine. Then we need to check the gauge length. These two are the important parameters by using the vernier caliper we need to check and we have to enter into the handout. This is the usual procedure when we do the real experiment what we are going to do. So initially we have to fix the original diameter and we have to fix the initial length by using this vernier caliper. So this explanation, this calculation, everything will put you as the separate handout with calculations, everything. But as a real procedure, how we have to do that I am explaining it to you. Okay. So now, so I have, I am, yeah. And one more thing I would like to explain. Initially, we are checking the diameter and length after we break the specimen. Because you know, the tensile testing, we are applying the axial load. It means what? We are keep on elongating the specimen. At particular point of the load, the specimen will break. It means the length of the specimen will get increased and the diameter will get decreased. So you need to check the percentage elongation in length and reduction in diameter. That column, that column is available in the handout that you need to calculate. Here there is a row, there is a column which explains all the rules. This has been solved separately for you as the reference in your uh, e-learning portal. So no need to worry about it. I am just showing you how the handout will look like. This is the reading you have to enter everything. So now to calculate the percentage elongation, we have two different methods. One by using this uh, length gauge we have and one more we have area gauge. We have the area gauge. By using this area gauge, we will find out the reduction in area percentage. <coughs> By using this length gauge, we will find out the increase in length percentage. We have to keep the fix the specimen like this. Initially, we need to fix it for zero length. Then you have to, after we break, again we need to fix it for after we break the specimen. Like the same you have to do directly we will enter the reading. Now this machine will generate the graph. This machine is interconnected with the computer. No need to put the graph manually. So we have to start the tensile. I am just starting the tensile. Initially you have to do all the settings to generate the graph. So I am putting file new series. So the name of the specimen what I fixed is steel. 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 So I am putting the name as steel. Then I have to change the background color to see the graph very clearly. Then I have to do the initial settings. I already named the specimen as steel. The initial diameter, what we I have measured was 6 diameter and the initial length, what I have measured is 30. So initial cross-sectional area, which is uh, the computer is giving the cross-sectional area, that you have to enter into the table. Then you have to give, okay. After you do all these things, you have to initialize this force and displacement. Wait, wait. So first I have to 
fix it with zero. Yeah, it is zero now. Now I need to start here. Then I have to give the load manually there until the specimen gets break. I have to watch. So I'm just starting now. We are sorry. Can give them. Now you can see how the graph is generated. Here, Mr. Bian is giving the load manually. The graph is keep on generating. change the scale point for the graph to see clearly. Snaky. So now we heard the breaking sound. It means what? We broke the specimen. I am just changing the scale point. To, to see the graph. The Now I am just uh, changing the scale to show you, yeah. So now we have the reading which starts from 0, so the maximum force it is reached around uh, in between 16 and 18, so we can take the maximum force as 17. And the breaking point it is also here, the proportional point you need to take the straight line point, here we can take the proportional point as 12.5. So you have all the points which is there, uh, in your handout everything is mentioned clearly, what is the elastic or limit of proportionality, what is the yield point, what is the maximum point and what is the breaking point. How we are going to solve everything in the handout, the same thing you have to solve it and you have to upload the handout as our uh, teacher's instructions. So that is all about this tensile testing and here we could see one more graph. This is the graph in between force and displacement and this one more graph also we could see here also I am changing the force. So this is the graph in between stress and strain. By using this graph, we will find out the value of Young's modulus for the limit of proportionality point. So in y-axis, what is the stress you have got? The same you need to check for the x-axis. That stress divided by strain, you will get the Young's modulus. Now we will see the specimen. We will come back to the specimen. All of you please have a look into the specimen. This is the steel specimen. I think it is. Uh, it has broken. It is. It has got the ductile nature. So it has broken in this way, there is a neck formation. After you break the specimen, at the breaking tip you need to find out the diameter. This is the diameter after we break the specimen. So for this diameter we have to measure, we have to enter the reading and that has to be useful for our calculation in our handout. Again by using the length gauge, we need to fix the specimen here like this. We have to fix the specimen and we need to measure the length. We have to fix as the perfect length and we have to measure the length. We need to enter into the handout. So according to the formulas which is presented in the handout, we need to calculate all the columns and we have to do 